the Vartora. Okay. Hi, Rabbi Black and uh, and Kenton Tour. It's so good to be here. See you back again. Um, and uh, yeah, for this time you've got you've got me rather than my students. But um, we've enjoyed. I've enjoyed uh, seeing them give their debris Torah. Really, um, you know, getting involved, having their own um, their ownership of the Torah that they've been learning, their Jewish studies, their Jewish lives, and being able to share that with you um, has been a real pleasure for me. And so again, build this really strong connection um, between the school and Kenton Shul. Um, as our, our local shul, as I like to think of it. Um, so that's been uh, really, really lovely to, to build. And, um, and thank you for having me back again. And I just wanted to share um, an idea based on, uh, based on one of the parashiot, the double parashiot, as the rabbi mentioned, um, and uh, it comes up in, in Massey, so in the second half of tomorrow's long laning. Um, and even though my name is Mr. Cohen, or Rafi Cohen, I happen to not be a Cohen, I happen to be a lady. It's a long story, oh. lots, of, uh, lots of interesting migration patterns or whatever else involved, so for another time perhaps. But it means that I'm always interested in everything to do with the Levian. And one of the things which um, pops up in this week's parasha is a fulfillment of something which was already set in motion in the parasha recorded a few weeks ago in Chukat. So in the parasha of Chukat, um, God lays out the special gifts that are given to the Levium and ends off that section saying, therefore, I've said regarding the Levium, they will have no territory. They will have no land among the Bnei Yisrael. Okay, so the Levium got special gifts because they had special duties um, and that's re repeated elsewhere in the Torah because uh, the Levium served in the, in the Beth Migdash or in the Mishkan as it was. So they received no portion, they didn't get the land. And it's in this week's parasha in Masay that the land of Israel, you can imagine the Bnei Israel standing on the mountains of Moab in today's Jordan, looking over at the land of Israel, and they're drawing the lines over here is going to be Reuven, and over there is going to be Shimon, and over there is going to be Yehuda, and Levi don't get any, uh, don't get any set territory. And so in this week's parasha, that's dealt with, and God says, okay, they don't get any territory, but they get... Um, 48 special cities, Levitical cities and their surrounding areas spread throughout the whole land so that the Levium are nicely distributed. Six of these cities we've met before, they're known as the cities of refuge, and they are also spread throughout the land of Israel so that if someone uh, accidentally commits, uh, well it's not a windy murder, for someone who, who commits manslaughter, an accidental cause of death, they can run away from people who would pursue them, who would want to take vengeance on them, and they can go and live safely in one of these cities, but it's kind of like an exile, so that they, uh, it's a lesson for them, you know, you've, you've done something bad, even if it wasn't deliberate, you need to take care of your actions. So we've got the six cities of refuge, 42 other cities for a grand total of 48. 48 is a bit of an unusual number in terms of uh, numbers that appear in Judaism. We're used to things being uh, multiples of seven. So 49, seven times seven, we've got Sfirat Omer, the counting of the Omer. We've got the cycle of Shemitah, um, of the uh, every seven years, the land was not allowed to be uh, harvested. And then in the 50th year, so after 49 years, you've got the Yovel year, another special year. So 49s and sevens we're regular, we're, we're familiar with. 48. I couldn't think of another 48 until I was doing a little bit more learning with my classes, and I came across in Pirkei Avot. Now, in Pirkei Avot, in the sixth, um, which is a collection of sayings and teachings of the rabbis of the time of the Mishnah, just after the destruction of the Second Temple, um, there's a, in the sixth chapter <laughs> of Pirkei Avot, it details um, let me just make sure I get this right. I can't remember who said it there, but it's in Pirkavot 6. 6, and the statement goes, greater is learning Torah than priesthood and than royalty. Why? Because royalty comes with 30 attributes. Priesthood comes with 24 attributes. But Torah is acquired by 48 attributes. And then it goes on to list these 48. So there's our link, 48 Levitical cities, 40 attributes of learning Torah, but it's got to be more than the number. We've got to go a little bit deeper. So let's look at some of these numbers. What 30 things does the king get? Well, they're listed in the Gemara, but they are basically things the king is entitled to. He's entitled to respect. He's entitled to a certain degree of wealth and taxes. He could have back in the day when this was the, when this was the thing, he could have a few more wives um, than your standard people on the, uh, on the field. 
but he had 30 special privileges as the king. The kind gadol, he had 24 gifts. These were things which were part of the sacrifices, things which were brought to the temple, which were then given to the kind gadol and his family. Because again, he was, as the other Levian, as the Kanim, he was a lady. He doesn't have any land, so he has to eat somehow. So he gets special gifts for the work that he does, agricultural and sacrificial gifts. But the Torah, these, the 40 attributes which come related to Torah, these aren't things which are given. These are things which have to be mastered, which someone has to take upon themselves to do lots of study and introspection, build up their skills, things like listening, things like analysis, things like humility. These are you know, traits which we build up for ourselves. So 48 character traits for learning Torah, 48 Levitical cities. Again, what's the link? I want to throw in one um, more quote, which is from the Mishnah in Horayot, which tells us that, again, comparing the, the uh, quality or the um, character of Torah against Kuhuna, against the, uh, the, the Kanim, the priests. And it says as follows, that even the lowest member of the category of B'nai Israel, someone, an illegitimate child, even an illegitimate child who, is, who become, grows up to be a, a Talmud Chacham, a Torah scholar, they are on a higher level than the Kohen Gadol. So, you know, you've got the lowest of the low, a random Israelite of not particularly illustrious birth. Through his Torah learning, he can stand on a higher plane than the Kohen Gadol. So what does this teach us? And what's this got to do with the Levium and the cities and everything else? So as much as we might like to think sometimes that we're working for equality and we're working for things to be fair, Judaism isn't naturally built like that in all things. We know that we've got, as much as I might want to one day be the king, I'm not going to be the king because the king has to be from Yehuda and I'm a lady. I want to be the Kohen Gadol, but I can't because I'm just a lady. There are things that I can't do. But in terms of learning Torah, in terms of being involved in the Torah world, which is very important to me as a teacher of Jewish studies, there it's a democracy. I can get involved. I can learn as much as I like. I can reach any heights. Talmud Torah is a democracy. And that's the point of the Levium. The Levium spread throughout their 48 cities. They don't get land. It's not about being part of the landed gentry, about being aristocracy. They have their duties. In Parshat Devarim, when they're being blessed by Moshe, they receive their special blessing, um, which is that the Levim are told, you shall teach, the Levim shall teach the laws throughout Jacob, and the Torah, they will teach Torah to Israel. That's why they had to be spread out. They were throughout the land because the Levim were the teachers. 48 cities through which they could reach the people and teach Torah. 40 attributes, which in order to teach Torah, they had to embody it themselves. They had to grow in their learning in Torah so that they could reach the heights that Talmud Torah, that learning Torah can bring you to. And I've learned so much. I've been very, very privileged to learn, you know, from the people who have taught me how to be a teacher, from my own Jewish studies teachers, people that I've learned with and learned from. But there's a statement um, of, uh, of Rabbi Hanina recorded in the Gemara in Tanit, which says where he says, I've learned much from my teachers and even more from my friends, but from my students, I have learned more than from all of them put together. And I've been very lucky because my students have shown me, have reminded me, have kept this going, this value of working hard to acquire a portion in Torah that is their own. They studied the Torah that they shared with you. They prepared their own Divrei Torah. They've shown me how worthwhile it is, how their faces shine when they really grasp Torah concepts. And I'm very, I feel very blessed to be their teacher. Um, and, to, uh, and to have the opportunity, to have had the opportunity to share them with you, to share their Torah with you, um, so that you can see the work that we're doing in JFS, the Torah, the Torah that we are learning together. Hopefully it's been of interest to you, um, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful Shabbat as a community. Um, again, it's been a privilege to be back, and I will hand you back over now to Rabbi Black. Uh, um. You're muted, Rabbi. Oh, okay, that's better. That's better. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hold on. Um, there we are. There we are. Okay. Um, that was a beautiful word of our Torah. Um, sorry, I, I I was muted. I didn't realize this is something that even Boris Johnson did. So I can do it. I can do it. I can definitely do it. But um, I, I just want to tell you that that of our Torah. It's very special because you're, you're, you're basically you're saying is that everybody can be a lazy. 
everybody can aspire to be a Levi. And at the beginning of the Torah, it says that just beforehand, that Atem Yulim Amleches Kohanim you should be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. But I want to take that one step further because the Rambam, Maimonides says at the end of Hilchus Shemitas Viovlis, I hope this helps you. Have a look up there, it's really interesting. He says, like this, he says that now we don't have Levium. We don't, well, the Levium don't do the, the job of being Levium, and the Kohanim really don't do the job of being Kohanim, apart from being giving the bracha that they give, but they don't do all the avoida and everything else. So he says, well, but he says everybody can become a Levi by by limbo the torah by study of torah so rafi thank you very very much for that to our torah i hope i i hope i i i i, I caught it what you're trying to say i mean beautiful idea beautiful idea let us now continue with a um with a share screen we're going to continue with um um you did no fish um on page 256 if you have the uh, um if you have the, the chief rabbi sidor um, and please follow you did nefesh and uh, frank please start as you see frank is a bit further away from me so we don't want to be too close as uh, as is the correct way to do things thank you Possibly can to Frank, and I'm moving to the side. Go. On. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Maria the Kadmahafana Petana Mismirat Nari Alo Arbaim Shana. Ismaqo ashmai mtagar tiramaya mumlo yalon sadam qala sherba tiranu qala tsayar lifna aduna kiva hinali spata aret ispat tamam tsadak miamin bemunato O have a Adonai Sinura Shomer Nafshot Hasida Yad Rashaim Yad Silen O Zorwala Tzadik Ol Yishrael Aim Simcha Simcha Tzadikim Adonai Veodu Lezecher Kodesho Iramayamu lo temel yoshveva narogim khawkhaf ya khad harim iranaynu lifna adunay ki walish patarat ish pat tabat sadak ve amin bemesharim Mamudana nida beralem shomaru edatov chok natan lamo adunai elohinu atanitam el nosei aitalahem nrokema. Lalilotam Rohamamu Adonai Eloheinu Neishtahakavu Lakotsho Ki Kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Mizmol David. Kol Adonai cholel ayalot la yechesof yarot. Uvechalo kulo merkavod Adonai l'amabor yashav Vayeshev Adonai melech le'olam 
Adonai Oslamo Iten Adonai Yevaret Et Amo Basha Le khado di le krat kala pne shabat ne kabla le khado di le krat kala pne shabat ne kabla shamov zakab di bore khad ishmi anu elam yu khado na khad ushmo khad. The shame of the fair and valetilla, the hard of the licrakala, the nation of Kabbala, licrachabat, the human elha, Kima Koravaraha, Merosh, we can and the Sukha, Sopma Asemach Shabbat, Hila. Lachado di li kratala, penei shaman de kavala, mikash melechir melocha, kumitsei mitocha fecha, rab lach sheme bie me kabacha, vahuya kamala laich chemla, lachado di li kratala. Nei Shabbat Nekabla, Itnari me'afar, Kumi lifshi b'nei tivatechami, Al yad ben Yishai v'talafi, Korba el nafshi g'yala, Lecha doni likrat kala, Nei Shabbat Nekabla, Itorari, itorari, ki orech kumi ori, 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 shirna beiri. Oran unai alai ikhtigla, lakhado di likrat kala, b'nei shabat nekabla, la tzei moshi vela tikami, Ma tishtachachi u ma temi, Bach yechesu ani e'abi, Benim netoi ratia, Lecha dodi likrakala, Benei Shabbat nekabala, Ve'ayudim shisa shosayich, Ve'rachaku komem alayich, יסיס עלייך אלוהייך, כי מסוס חתן על כלה, לך אדוני לקראת כלה, בני שבת נקבלה, ימין ושמאל תפרוצי, ואת אדוני תריצי על יד איש בן פרצי, ואני אשמחה ונגילה, לך אדוני לקראת כלה, בני שבת וקבלה, בואי בשלום עטרת פלדה, גם בשמחה וצהלה. Toch emune am segula, Boi chala, boi chala, Lecha doni likrat kala, Pnei Shabbat nekabla, Lecha doni likrat kala, Pnei Shabbat nekabla. We can do that now. Um, <laughs>
yeah, I, I looked through the liturgy and there is nothing I could obviously see that said football is coming home, but the theme of coming home recurs throughout our tefillah. And uh, clearly when we return the Sefer Torah to the Ark, we say, uh, Shuva Hashem, return, O Lord. And at the end, uh, we say, Venashuva, we, we will return, Chadesh Omenu Kedem, just like the days of old. So that seemed the most appropriate and as close as we could possibly get. Uh, it's something that probably we haven't heard for a long time. And uh, we thought that it would be nice to sing that for you this evening. Page 432. Shuvah Adonai, Yisrael, Limanukhatakha <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
The traditional tune for Agacha, which you all know, and please all join in and sing along with your home. Okay, can't hear me, Rabbi. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Maybe it's not working on the side. Can you hear me now? Yeah? Yes. Okay. okay. I don't know. Yes, Rabbi, okay. thank you. Okay. On the other side. Maybe if I come on the other side. Let me try it over here. <sighs> okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, Rabbi, thank you. It's a bit problem, isn't it? Ayatalaroshpina, <laughs> Metashem ayatazot iniflat beneinu Zayom asashem nagira benismachavo Zayom asashem now we turn um, at this particular point to page 628, third paragraph down, Beautiful Nigan, um, beautiful song from the Chabad tradition. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. 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 Thank you.